Welcome! By now you should have installed everything you need for using Python for data analysis. Let's now begin discussing NumPy, an important package for managing data and performing calculations. Without NumPy, there would not be data analysis using Python, so understanding NumPy is critical. Our key objective in this section is learning to use the tools provided in NumPy. We start by introducing NumPy data types. We then quickly move into discussing NumPy arrays called ND arrays, which are the main objects of interest in NumPy. We discuss how to create these arrays from programmer input, from other Python objects, from files, and even creating them from functions. Once we know how to make arrays, we discuss subsetting them so that we can extract the useful information they contain. We proceed to discuss how mathematical operations are performed on ND arrays, from basic arithmetic to full-blown linear algebra. We wrap up the section by discussing array methods and functions, looking particularly at vectorization, a powerful method that can be both fast and syntactically cleaner than loops. Let's begin by discussing NumPy data types, which are conceptually important when handling NumPy arrays. In this video, we will discuss NumPy data types, controlled by dtype objects, which are how NumPy stores and manages data. We also briefly introduce NumPy arrays called ND arrays and discuss what they do. Let's now talk about NumPy arrays, which are called ND arrays. These are not the arrays you may encounter in C or C++. A better analog is matrices in MATLAB or R. That is, they behave like a mathematical object resembling a mathematical vector, matrix, or tensor. While they can store non-mathematical information like strings, they exist mainly for managing and facilitating operations with data that are numeric in nature. ND arrays are assigned a particular data type or D-type upon creation, and all current and future data in the array must be of that D-type. They also have more than one dimension, referred to as axes. A one-dimensional ND array is a line of data, this would be a vector. A two-dimensional ND array would be a square of data, effectively a matrix. And a three-dimensional ND array would be a cube of data, like a tensor. Any number of dimensions is permitted, but most ND arrays are one- or two-dimensional. D-types are similar to types in basic Python language. But NumPy D-types resemble the data types seen in other languages like C, C++, or Fortran in that they are fixed length. D-types do have a hierarchy. A D-type usually has a string descriptor followed by a power of 2 that determines how large the D-type is. Here is a list of common D-types. We'll be looking at some of these in the next demonstration. Let's see some of the stuff that we just discussed in action. The first thing I'm going to do is load in the NumPy library. Next, I'm going to create an array of 1s, and they're going to be integers. This is what that array looks like. If I were to look at the d-type, it is int 8, in other words, 8-bit integers. I can also create an array filled with 16-bit floating point numbers. This array looks similar to the array of integers, but notice the dot at the end of the ones. That's somewhat of an indicator that the data contained is floating point rather than integer. Let's create an array filled with unsigned integers. Again, they're ones, and it looks similar to what we had before, but now let's try to change some of the data. For example, I can change a number to negative one in the array int ones, and it's fine, but if I try to change it to negative one in the unsigned integers, what I end up with is 255. Let's create an array filled with strings. Notice that I haven't specified the dtype argument here, because usually the dtype is guessed. And a good guess is usually made, but there's no guarantees. For example, here, I want to assign a new value of Waldo to the contents of this array. Now, this d-type means that you have strings that cannot exceed length 4. Waldo has 5 characters, though, so when I change the array and change its contents, what I end up with is Wald rather than Waldo because you can't have larger than 5 characters. So it just took the first 4. I could specify the d-type manually and say that 16 characters are allowed, and in this case, Waldo works fine. In addition to d-types, NumPy introduces special numeric values NaN and Inf. These can arise in mathematical computations. NaN means not a number. It indicates a value that should be in numeric is, in fact, not defined mathematically. For example, 0 divided by 0 yields NaN. 
Sometimes NAN is also used to signify missing information. For example, pandas uses this. Inf indicates a quantity that is arbitrarily large, though in practice it means larger than any number the computer can conceive. Negative inf is also defined and means arbitrarily small. This could occur if a numeric operation blows up, that is, it grows rapidly without bound. Nothing ever is equal to NAN. It makes no sense for something undefined to be equal to something else. You need to use the numpy function isNAN to identify NAN. While the double equal sign does not work for NAN, it does work for inf. That said, you're better distinguishing finite and infinite values using the function is finite or is inf. Arithmetic involving NAN and inf is defined, but be warned that it may not get you what you want. Some special functions are defined to help avoid issues when NAN or inf are present. For example, NAN sum computes sums of iterable objects while omitting NANs. You can find a full list of such functions in the NumPy documentation. I will only mention them when I use them. Let's now see a live demonstration. The first thing I'm going to do is create an array and it's going to be filled with 1, negative 1, and 0 and then I'm going to divide this by 0 and see what we get. So the moment we do this it complains because you're not supposed to divide by 0, obviously. We've talked about this in elementary school. But that said, it does come up with numbers. 1 divided by 0 is inf, negative 1 divided by 0 is negative inf, and 0 divided by 0 is not a number. So how can we detect special values? Let's first run a loop that is wrong. We're going to iterate through every possible value of vec2 and print the results of i equaling np.inf, i equaling np.inf but with a negative sign, and whether i is equal to nan. What we get is a list and this is fine, this is fine, this is not fine. We wanted it to detect and NAN, but it did not do so. So let's try it using the function is NAN. This does in fact work. We were able to detect the NAN. Now let's detect finite versus infinite. We can use these functions here. Not surprisingly, inf is not finite, neither is negative inf, but NAN neither counts as finite or infinite, it is undefined. Let's see what happens when we add inf with 1 and inf times negative 1. And let's see nan plus 1. We always get nan. If I were to raise 2 to the power of negative infinity, what I get is 0. But if I were to raise it to infinity, I get infinity. And inf minus inf is equal to not a number. Now let's create an array and fill it with a number 999. If I were to raise this array to itself, in other words 999 to the 999, what I end up with is inf. This is too large a number these programs to handle. That said, we know that this number is not actually infinite, it is finite, but to the computer it is so large it may as well be infinite. Now let's create an array and give the first element of this array NAN. If I were to sum up the elements of this array, what I get is NAN, because NAN plus anything is NAN. But if I were to use the function NAN sum, the NANs will be ignored and I get the reasonable value of 4.